want to do this unit. We want to do releasing time to care. You know, I don't, it's, it's going to be interesting and, you know, in a perfect world, I'd love all 29 of our units to stand up and say me next. Not exactly sure that's going to be the way it works, so I'm not sure what the approach is once we have uh, units that say I don't want to do that program or I never want to do that program. But for now, we're trying to work into our system a, a poll where I have a letter that goes out to nurse managers at inviting them to be the next units on the releasing time to care. Um, rollout plan and so far that's been successful so I do that again I really touch base with all the organizational supports that you need so all the people out in your region that would be affected by new units starting up on releasing time to care making sure that they really know when we're starting new units the nurse managers have we've developed a, um, a module a module that a getting started kit, I guess, that says, what do I really need to do to get started? So it's a big list of, you know, um, you need to have a plan for an educational session, you need to find your support person, you need to buy your board, you need to buy these supplies for your meetings. So we have a, a big long list that we work through with the nurse managers or with the units in terms of what are the things I need to do so you're ready to go for your first meeting. Um, your dedicated RT support person for the unit, which um, originally in the UK we heard 50% of nurse managers time needs to be dedicated to the release and time to care program. In our region our nurse managers find it really difficult to give up their particular tasks. Well, I can't give up interviews and I can't give up scheduling and I can't give up discipline stuff and so they find it really hard. So what we've done to kind of modify that is our nurse managers have had an opportunity to resource somebody at around 50% of the time that would be able to do all of the RTC activities. So typically we either have, most of the time we have our nurse managers that run the meetings and then we have this resource person or this support person that actually does all the releasing time to care activities that you need to do on a weekly basis. Some of these resource people even run the meetings as well with the really um, visual and um, really overt presence that the nurse manager is on board. To me I think it's really important it would be difficult to run a a uh, releasing time to care project on a unit if the nurse manager wasn't really visual and vocal and really supportive of that program. So that's how we work it anyway. So there's, we go through some training either with Health Quality Council here or we uh, have an internal training program that's just similar to this kind of stuff too. I steal all kind of slides and stole them from the UK. Works really good. And um, you know, provide that kind of training so they know what to expect. We do that vision and mission development and we've Again, I've been trying to connect with some of the other um, support people in our organization. So our learning and development um, department has just brought in this really wonderful, has nothing to do with releasing time to care, but this really wonderful program where they work units through developing a vision and mission and accountability statements and values and stuff. And so I was able to tag into that and say, would you come and it's actually a day long session that they do, but I say, will you scale it down to kind of what we need for releasing time to care. So I get, you know, someone who's an expert on developing um, visions and missions with units to come in and they work through this. It's a program where they have, uh, I think, a thousand different pictures and stuff, go up and grab which picture reminds them or, or triggers something that they want their unit to be. I thought it was great, so we've been able to uh, click in with some of our other um, auxiliary supports as well. And then that real staff education and awareness and We've had some units that have been really successful with getting all their staff together so we can do a big education session. And then I, I've done it on a unit where we didn't have that. And so it takes a long time for the unit to catch up with what the heck's going on if they don't get that really good, you know, half an hour or hour long kind of session on what's releasing time to care. I know last year on nursing ed days, we only have them once a year in our region. I got on just a ton of nursing ed day. Um, schedules and that was a really good way to get out to lots of nurses to say here's the program that might not be coming this year to your unit but it's coming so people get, get to know that. So th these are like the key implementation activities. Um, so really at the beginning of every single module, the very first meeting, so again we have around our, our meetings or our modules are around four to six weeks. So the first <coughs> meeting might be three or four hours long and usually the improvement consultant would do kind of a one one hour presentation on what is the module, what can you expect to happen over the next six weeks, how do teams work, um, what ideas worked from the UK or what Saskatchewan ideas we have. So just a really good kind of 
um, understanding of what this team is in for because we we've, we've had lots of um, you know frontline staff who say I have no idea what I'm doing here even after a meeting or two they still have no idea what they're doing here so I think that there's um, they're not, our staff certainly aren't used to sitting around and people say, what are your good ideas and then how are we going to implement it, you know? So just helping them understand how it works, how you work with those rapid cycle improvements, what's lean methodology, all that kind of stuff. So again, we have our dedicated QI consultants uh, each week to support the unit managers and again with that idea of doing that knowledge transfer. Some of our nurse managers, in, so far in my experience, are very strong at getting up and facilitating a meeting. Other ones are not. And so it's that, it's actually that leadership building with your nurse manager as well to say, okay, that's not your thing to go and deliver and, and um, facilitate a three hour meeting. Well, that, I'll do it this week. And then next week, I'll do the majority of it. You do this part and then you just transition them into it. And uh, the first unit that we started, that's exactly how it went. You know, Susan wasn't that comfortable with going up and talking in front of her um, team. Just She just sent me an email that says we're starting a new module tomorrow and uh, you know, I have the whole PowerPoint done of what I want to talk to them about and she has the whole agenda made up and the whole plan so she's just transitioned into that and that, so that's the job of the quality improvement um, facilitator. And again, just those rapid cycle improvements and making sure that you're pacing your pro project. So typ a typical RTC meeting for releasing or for RTHR would always be, you know, updates since last meeting, so very typical to your um, action planner. So you would get out your action planner or your to-do list and look, okay, who, who was to do what since last meeting and where are we at with that and update. We always start with that. I think that's really important because people right away in your team get the idea that if I agree to do it, someone's going to ask me about it next week. I can't kind of let it slide for a few weeks. I mean, sometimes you go, I, didn't, I definitely didn't have time or I wasn't able to get my um, that information to me. But in general, the expectation is, is that everyone leaves with a job and has something to do and comes back and report to that. So we always start with that update since last meeting and then kind of like discuss um, what, what, what is the objective of this particular meeting right now, what do we want to get, where do we want to get to in the module, what's the outcome of this meeting, sometimes you don't always know that but you can kind of, kind of predict it as you go along. So then hopefully and uh, often there's some type of kind of QI activity that we do, you know, um, whether it's some brainstorming activity or a process map or some timing or spaghetti mapping or something and again that QI consultant is always teaching the, the new improvement teams how to do that because you might have one team that learns spaghetti mapping but the next module team didn't, didn't learn that so you're always bringing in those uh, that methodology that legitimizes and measures what we're doing. So usually lots of our teams break up into smaller teams just to get a chunk of work done during that two or three hours that we meet, then we'll all meet back together to review the progress and we'll make a plan for the next meeting. Um, and then one thing that we always do is, and, um, is do a round table and that's a simple go around to your group and ask them, you know, what do you think? And lots of times they'll say, well I like that particular, I like the idea when we came up with this new checklist and then I'll say, no, what, what do you, what, how did you think the meeting went, you know, not around the specifics but how are you feeling about being involved in the team and, you know, you get people to say I'm completely overwhelmed and then you discuss, well what are some strategies around being overwhelmed. We've, I've had people say, when I was out in the war today I got some really bad vibes out there. And so then we say, okay, let's talk about that, let's mitigate that, we're obviously not communicating enough. So just a real round table where people get to express how they feel in a really open and, and honest way. And I think sometimes it, it's difficult when you have myself or even incumbent consultants for people to feel really comfortable with saying, I think the meeting sucked today, but I, I like people to say that because that's the only way that we can change. So we really are improved, so we really do encourage people to do that. So it, it's a nice thing that we do for sure.